Time for the Morning Rush to begin with a new study on hate groups. Here's Jamie Seymour. Thanks, Crystal. New Mexico stands out as the only state listed with no hate groups. A new study shows the number of hate groups found across the U.S. in the last year. The ACLU of New Mexico says despite the lack of organized groups, there has been an uptake in the number of hate crimes, including racially motivated civil rights incidents. David? Developing overnight, we expect to learn more about a fatal pedestrian crash, including the identity of the person hit. Now, this happened in the area of Central and Conchas. This is near Eubank. Officers say a vehicle struck the pedestrian around 10:30 last night. Police say the pedestrian died on scene. Kristen. Next weather maker moves in later today. We're going to be looking at some spotty snow showers over southern Colorado as well as the northern mountains. But Albuquerque increasing cloud cover today. The next big to come Albuquerque with some spotty rain showers, accumulating snowfall up in the northern mountains in southern Colorado. David. New at 630, Hyundai, Hyundai and Kia are recalling more than a half a million vehicles here in the U.S. The automaker says the recall is due to problems that can cause engine failures and fires. The recall affects Kia Soul small SUVs from 2012 through 2016, Tucson SUVs from 2011 to 2013, and Sportage SUVs from 2011 to 2012. On to new news this morning, a public education reform bill giving teachers a bump in pay is now in the hands of the full House. House Bill 5 would raise minimum salaries to $40,000 dollars for starting teachers, 60,000 for teachers with advanced credentials. It would also increase spending for at-risk students. At 8:30 this morning, the man accused of stealing an ambulance right here from Presbyterian Hospital is scheduled to be in court for a status conference. David Nair is accused of stealing the ambulance in September. APD says spike strips finally got him to stop. We will let you know what happens in court. The legal status for some immigrants is expected to be extended through 2020 by the Department of Homeland Security. This applies to immigrants from El Salvador, Haiti, Honduras, and Sudan. This comes after President Trump sought to end their temporary protective status that was overruled by a court. A joint resolution giving voters the power to petition and recall some elected officials is now in committee. Petitioners would have to get 25% of voters' signatures in 90 days. Now that would trigger a recall election. Right now, the only way to remove an elected official is through impeachment. Moving forward, a bill creating an early childhood education department is now in the hands of the full Senate. On Monday, the Senate Education Committee stripped the program of some oversight. According to the New Mexican, though, the Senate Finance Committee put the oversight back in just yesterday. This morning, Mayor Tim Keller is asking the state for millions in state funding to combat crime and help the homeless. According to the journal, one of the biggest projects is a more than $34 million joint request with the county for a radio system to update to have for first responders. Now, they are also asking for $28 million to build a 24-7 shelter for the homeless. The man accused of prostituting his young daughter to fuel his drug habit is expected to be retried in April. J Judge Cindy Leos declared a mistrial in the case of James Stewart yesterday. The reason? A witness revealed information in the court that they were not supposed to. The woman accused of killing another outside a family dollar store is facing an open count of murder and will likely soon face a judge. Police say Maya Madrid Schleicher shot and killed Amanda Madrid, someone she knew on Wednesday afternoon. Police say an exchange of words is what led to that shooting. By this afternoon, officials in California say residents of at least one town may be allowed to return to their now flooded homes by car. This as the high waters continue to recede. Torrential rains caused the Russian River to reach historic highs, cresting at 45 feet, flooding entire communities. At least one person died. Kristen. Today's Metro Threat Index only added two. We have some chilly temperatures this morning down to those lower 40s. Breezy at times later today. Those winds closer to 15 miles per hour, but no problems temperature wise with 60s underneath that partly sunny sky. Likely to see that Metro Threat Index climb with the addition of rain chances tomorrow. Crystal. The local company is bringing parts of New Mexico's history back to life into the big screen. Rangewood Reclaimers travel the state finding wood with unique stories, then preserve it in their warehouse. They recently joined the New Mexico Film Commission to be the film industry's go-to resource. Well, listen up, parents. The deadline to submit changes to school rules at APS is coming up. It's on March 27th. The APS Student Service Center is asking parents to submit the changes that they would like made to the Student Behavior Handbook. The suggestions must relate to policies that have a direct impact on students and should not be school-specific. New at 630, Gap and Old Navy are splitting up. The announcement that it will break into two companies. One of the companies will contain Old Navy. The other unnamed business will be comprised of Gap, Banana Republic, and other brands. The move is designed to allow Old Navy to expand on its own. 
time now for a check on your Friday morning commute. Not seeing any major accidents out there this morning, just quite a bit of construction. We also have eyes on the big eye and everything is moving smoothly at this hour. Jason Witten will be back on the Dallas Cowboys football field for the 2019 season. He's coming out of retirement. The tight end will rejoin the team after a year as a broadcaster. Witten has played in 11 Pro Bowls during his 15 years with the Cowboys. Officials say his one-year contract will earn him about $5 million. Ah. I'll come back for a year for $5 million. <laughs> Right. We're taking you back on this day. 21 years ago, we started our wettest march we've had here in Albuquerque with 2.34 inches of rainfall. That was about an inch and three quarters above average. The driest we've ever had, 1956, where we saw no rain at all. Obviously, that was 57 inches below average for us. Time now for a look at the five facts. At number five this morning, it is a big weekend for spicy food lovers. The 31st annual Fiery Foods and Barbecue Show kicks off today through Sunday. The food fair is taking place at Sandia Resort and Casino. Now, hundreds are already preparing for the best fiery foods and sauces, and the event will feature at least a thousand different products. Now, the Fiery Foods Show is the largest in the country for fiery food products and barbecue sauces. Number four, now we could soon learn the future for a new solid waste facility as early as this month. Solid waste is waiting for the green light from the city's development review board for the 30 to 35 million dollar project. If they get the go ahead, it would be built off Edith and Comanche. Solid Waste say they want to renovate and expand its existing operations there and make the recycling drop off more convenient. At number three, mostly partly sunny today. Showers starting to work in over our northern mountains, including southern Colorado late day. Breezy to windy conditions this weekend with more rain and snow over northern, western, and central areas. Albuquerque best shot of rain will be tomorrow. Temperatures stay mild in western and central areas, much colder out in the east. From planes. Number two now, News 13 special assignment is showing the number of teachers and coaches is starting to decline in schools. The reason? The Education Department revoked 29 teachers' licenses in 2018 for teachers who got in trouble. In 2016 and 2017 combined, though, there were only five revoked licenses. Before 2018, many of the case files were incomplete. Officials say it's now looking to upgrade its technology to keep track of licensure investigations. And at number one, removing embattled elected officials could soon be in the hands of voters. A joint resolution to do that is in committee, but that would also be up to voters. Now, to get rid of an elected official, petitioners would have to cite acts or failures and get 25% of voters' signatures. That would have to happen in 90 days. Now, that would trigger a full recall election. Right now, the only way to remove an elected official is through impeachment, which requires a panel of legislators to investigate and act.